as much as I enjoy hacking using passive DNS data and because of how easy and quick it is, it's not the best and most comprehensive list of assets or subdomains for a particular domain. And that's because most of these tools can't catch a new asset that's been spun up recently. Maybe it doesn't have an SSL cert. Maybe it was spun up an hour ago. Whatever the reasoning is, some of these tools aren't able to catch them, especially if they're free or on the lower end and cheaper end of it. And a lot of times these third-party tools, they release their data days or sometimes weeks after it's been collected. And by then it's already old and it's not as accurate as we want it. So knowing all of this, I thought to myself, why not make a episode on attack surface management and what DNS brute forcing looks like. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what DNS brute forcing is, how to do it and what you need to do it. And if you stick around till the end of the video, I'm going to tell you whether or not I think supplement brute forcing is worth it or if I would do it in your shoes, depending on where you are in your hacking bug bounty or red team journey. So let's jump into it. In order for this to be successful, there are three main components. One is a word list. You can either use setlist on GitHub, I'll link down down below in the description, or you can use asset notes word list project to have a ton of them. You can use one of those. Uh, it all depends on what you want to do, how fast you want to go and how many subdomains you want to look for. And the way a word list looks like is it takes each of those words in those word lists. So if there's a million, you're going to have a million outputs. It takes every single one of those and it puts them before your domain. So if you have nahamsec.com and your first word in that word list is app, it's going to put app.nahamsec.com. If it's dashboard, dashboard.nahamsec.com and it's going to create a million lists of these subdomains and create them for you to use in your next step. The next thing you want to do and the second component of subdomain brute forcing is having fresh resolvers. You can do this in two different ways. One, you can go on github.com and download them. Uh, I think there are GitHub repositories that do it regularly. Or two, you can also use tools like DNS Validator. I think Vortex and Codingo put this together. It's on GitHub, it's open source, you can use it. But that's another option. What it does is it takes resolvers and we're going to need resolvers to see which one of these domains are accessible, which one of them resolve. And we can use our default resolvers or one resolver because we're going to get rate limited and then that's not good. We're gonna get inaccurate results. And again, it's not something that we want to do and we want to avoid it. And last but not least, the third thing you need is a tool, a tool that takes the resolvers, takes your word list, and does the actual brute forcing. For the sake of this video, I'm going to use Shuffle DNS, but honestly, the tool you use, it all depends on what you want to do. It's all personal preference. You can use tools like Amass, you can use Sublister, Subbrute, uh, Find Domain, or even Nmap for this example. So again, I'm going to use Shuffle DNS, and each of these tools have different accuracy. Some of them are faster, some of them are better. Again, it all depends on what you want to do. So I'll leave that up to you to pick what tool you want to use, but honestly stick to one, master it. And if you don't, if you outgrow it, use another tool or use a variation of them. So now that we know what tools we have, we have to install them. Unfortunately, because I want to make these videos short, I've already set these up, but to show you how easy it is, I'm just going to cat the tools file that I have right here. You can see you have mass DNS. You just have to run five commands. And again, all of these are within the readme or install files of each of these repositories. But again, it's not that hard. You have to clone it. You have to make the installation depending on what program they use, or sometimes you just have to download the binary in case of shuffle DNS. So the first thing you want to do is you want to use DNS validator. What this does is it's going to go and check for a list of resolvers using the public DNS info. It's going to take all those DNS servers, all those name servers, and it's going to output them into a resolver.txt. Or honestly, if you want to skip this, go on GitHub. I promise there's a ton of good results for this. Or you can just do this every month, have a list of them, and repeat and repeat until uh, you're tired of it, honestly. But all you do is you click this, and what it does is it's going to run this, it's going to grab all these resolvers, and it's going to process them and see if there's any issues with them. And if there is, it's going to skip them and not use it. Well, for the sake of this example, I'm going to cancel this. I've already done this step just to make the video quicker. We're going to skip it and we're going to go and look at our word list. The next thing you want to do is you want to download the word list from uh, asset node. This is the one I'm going to use. It's called best DNS. I've already downloaded it. It's in my folder right here. It's called best DNS word list. And then we're going to use this against a domain and have it look and see how many of these domains exist. So now that we have all of our components, we know what we have. We're going to use shuffle DNS to see how it looks. Unfortunately, because I want to keep these videos short, 
I have created a smaller version of a word list that I'm going to use with Shuffle DNS. And I've also created an entire environment for this that is going to brute force again. So Hack with Nahomtik is what I've created. And we're going to use our best DNS word list. Again, this is a word list with 30, 40 uh, words in there. If I do a million, it's going to take a lot longer. And of course, we have our resolvers using resolver.txt. And bam, as you can see, immediately it comes back and shows us everything that it has found. Okay, now we have a list of them. And you can see these are the subdomains that I've came back. Again, this example is very quick because I only use 30 words. It's a small infrastructure, so it's going to be quick and it's gonna tell us what's out there for this. So there are a few downfalls to using DNS brute forcing. For example, a company like Yahoo that have wildcard available. So if you go start.api.yahoo.com, everything behind API is gonna come as valid. It's gonna make it a lot of noise and a lot of inaccurate results. I know some of these tools are very good at catching those wildcards and exclude them, but still there is a chance that this may not happen. Two, it requires a lot of resources. You need to have a good word list, you need to have a good setup, you need to have resolvers, and the list goes on and on and on. And obviously the larger the organization, the more work you have to do, not even mentioning permutations, which it's a whole other episode I'm gonna do on it, but those are things to consider when doing DNS brute forcing. To be honest, I personally don't do DNS brute forcing as much, especially on large organization. My thing that I say, if you watch my streams on Sundays, if you come to any of my talks, I always say, if it's important, to put an SSL cert on it or it gets indexed somewhere, I rely on that even though I know that is not always the case. It just makes it easier because my hacking doesn't fully rely on automation. I like to find apps that are points of interest and then look and dig into them and find vulnerabilities within them. But if you're a top bug bounty hunter, you are really good at automating, you want to get better at automating, subdomain brute forcing is very worth it, especially when it comes to subdomain takeovers, extending your attack surface, all the other stuff that comes with it. So personally, again, to going back to the original question of is it worth it? For me personally, it's not, depending on the customer or the client that I'm hacking on. So I'm gonna say one more time, just to make it clear, it is completely up to you. I personally use this against smaller organizations because it's quicker, they don't have a lot of infrastructure and I don't have to worry about different permutations, maybe different environments, different domains. But when it comes down to a larger org, I just use either tools, uh, I use open source data, or I rely on a third party like Shodan, Census, Security Trails, and so on. That's it, let me know, what do you think? Do you use DNS brute forcing? Are you going to do it? If not, why? And if you do it already, why do you do it? Has it been helpful? And let me know what you wanna see next in the videos. And last but not least, if you haven't already, do me a favor, hit that like button. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't, become a homie and help me grow this channel so I can make more content for you and put out more videos to help you become better at bug bounty hunting, hacking, and recon. All right, that's it. See you in the next video.